Okay, good afternoon Year 6. We're going to do another science lesson um, and today we're looking at classifying animals, that means like sorting them into groups, based on observable characteristics, so things that we can see. So it's really important that we can group animals and plants so that we can narrow them down into specific groups rather than talking about all animals and all plants as a whole. Scientists believe that there may be as many as 10 million different species on Earth, so when studying their lives and behaviours, it's important that we can subsection them into groups so that we can research them appropriately. So, in the 1700s, Carl Linnaeus came up with a method of organising plants and animals into categories that scientists all over the world would be able to use. And it involved using seven layers of classification. Now, they look a little bit confusing, but we're going to have a look and talk through them together, and then you're going to have a go at doing something slightly different, so don't panic. So, his seven layers of classification um, started very broadly and got more and more specific as they worked down. So, he had the kingdom, the phylum, the class, the order, the family, the genus, and then the species. Now, you're more than welcome to have a read through of these definitions if you want. What I'm going to do is skip on and show you an example, which will hopefully make it a little bit clearer. So here we can see at the top the kingdom. And the kingdom here is either talking about animals or plants. So in this case, we're talking about animals. And then we move on to the phylum. And you can see there's a Latin word here, cordata, which means we're talking about vertebrates. Then it goes further into the class of animal, and we're looking at mammals. Then it goes further into mammals. What kind of mammals are they? They are carnivores, so they're meat eaters. So now we end up with just the animals that are vertebrates and our mammals and our meat eaters. Then we go further down into the family, and here we're looking at cats. We go further into the genus, and we're looking at... Okay, sorry, Miss Borden walks into the room and distracted me, but we'll carry on. So, we've got the family here, we're looking at cats, and then we go more specific to the genus, which type of cat, and then even more specific to the species, and we end up here with lion. So we've worked our way down from all the animals to the vertebrates, the mammals, the meat eaters, the cats, a specific type of cat, and then the lion. So I'll just whiz through this, though, we don't need to know it in great detail, but the main point to take from here is how he named the species. So he came up with a new way of naming organisms. So he named them in Latin so that everybody could use it all over the world. The first part of the name came from the genus here. And then the second part of the name was the species. So we can see it here. The genus for lion uh, was Panthera and the species was Leo. So the lion in Latin is called Panthera Leo. Now, luckily for us, this is not the only way we can classify organisms. There are simpler ways. So think back to year four. How have we classified living things in school in the past? Pause the video if you need to. Take a minute and then click on. So we've had different ways of classifying vertebrates and invertebrates. We've had mammals, birds, fish, reptiles, amphibians, insects, arachnids, annelids, mollusks, crustaceans, and echinoderms. So what I'm going to do on the next slide is I'm going to give you a couple of definitions. I'd like to see if you can work out which one of these I am referring to. So you've got three definitions here, year six. Pause the video for a moment if you need to. And then on the next slide, hopefully, you will have the answers. So we should have had fish, we should have had annelids, and then we should have had insects. You've got three more coming up on the next slide, and your job is exactly the same. Pause the video if you need to. And you should have had bird, arachnids, and mammal. And the same thing for the last time, you've got two more here. Pause the video if you need to have a minute, and see if you can work out what's being described. Reptiles and amphibians. Well done if you got that right. So today we're going to use the level of class, which was talking about mammals, reptiles, etc., to create some flow diagrams um, which will describe organisms. So let's have a look at one together so it makes a little bit more sense. So here I've got four animals. I've got a panda, a lion, a penguin, and an octopus. And I'm going to start with a question about their class. Are they mammals, yes or no? Now, two of these animals will be a panda and a lion will both go into yes, and a penguin and an octopus will both go into no. So, I'm going to need another question to make it more specific. I can see here that these two animals are going to follow the yes and the no route. I now need a question that's going to separate the panda and the lion, and I need a question that's going to separate the penguin and the octopus. 
So I'm going to ask here, are they a carnivore? So do they eat meat? The lion will be yes, so he'll come down to the bottom. And the panda will be no, so he'll follow the no arrow. On the other side, I'm going to ask, are they a bird? The penguin will be yes, so they will follow the arrow down to yes, and the octopus will be no. So here you can see what it'll look like. Now we don't need to put the pictures um, after the first question. We can save those until the end, but I've left it up so that hopefully it's a little bit clearer for you. Now, what I've done is on Dojo, I've uploaded some pictures of animals to give you a little bit of inspiration. Your job for the rest of the session, year six, is to have a go at coming up with your own flow diagram. I'd like it to have four animals. So we're going to need a top question and then you're going to need two more questions to break them down further. Can you create a flow diagram starting with a question about the class of animals? So are they a mammal? Are they a reptile? Are they an amphibian? Are they a fish? Um, and then moving on to something that you can choose. It can be to do with appearance. It can be to do with their diets, anything you like. Okay, and as per usual, once you've done that, please could you send it through to myself, Mr. Pugh or Miss Alexander. Thank you.